Are you curious about what Adventureland and Disneyland has to offer? Let's take a look at that. Hi everyone, it's Ket from the Mouse Scout. And today we're at Disneyland in California and we're going to take a close look at everything in Adventureland. When Walt first envisioned Adventureland, he wanted it to be based on his award-winning nature documentaries on Asia and Africa, calling it True Life Adventureland. It was originally supposed to have real animals, but zoologists told Walt that real animals would just lie around or hide, so they opted for the mechanical animals instead. Adventureland is a blend of Africa, Asia, South America, and the South Pacific. You're surrounded by the jungle. There are tribal masks, conga drums, and totem poles. It's the 1930s version of the tropics, and when the sun goes down and the tiki torches are lit, you feel like you've traveled back in time. The first attraction you'll see when you're heading towards Adventureland is the Enchanted Tiki Room. This attraction debuted in 1963 and was the first audio animatronic show in the world. Walt's original idea for the Tiki Room was for it to be a dinner show. He envisioned a Chinese restaurant with a fortune teller in the lobby, performing animals, and a joke-telling dragon. However, this idea was too complex to maintain a fully functioning restaurant with the show, so it became an attraction instead. Patterned after the French Follies Berger, this is where the birds sing and the flowers croon. Tiki's bang on drums and belt out Hawaiian war chants. The iconic song, The Tiki 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 Room, was written by the Sherman Brothers, who wrote music for Mary Poppins, The Jungle Book, and many other Disneyland attractions. I may have seen this show a million times, but I still love it. I just love going in there in a nice air-conditioned room, sitting on a cushy seat, listening to the birds sing, and, of course, eating a Dole Whip. And that reminds me, while you're waiting to get into the Tiki Room, be sure to go to the Dole Stand to get that Dole Whip, and you can enjoy it during the show. And speaking of Dole Whips, which I tend to do a lot, when you exit the Tiki Room, head to the left to the Tropical Hideaway and enjoy some exotic snacks and special Dole Whips. This is a quick service location and it's like an outdoor marketplace and it sits between the Tiki Room and the Jungle Cruise. It's a great place just to sit and watch the Jungle Cruise boats go by while you snack on vegetable, beef or chicken boughs, fresh fruit or special Dole Whips. Oh, and there is entertainment. Over by the river is Rosita from the Tiki Room, who is embarking on a solo career. Her jokes would make any Jungle Cruise skipper proud. At the Jungle Cruise, you'll climb aboard a small riverboat and cruise down the African Congo, the Nile, and the Amazon. It's 1938, and you enter the headquarters and boathouse of the Jungle Navigation Company, located in a British colony. While you're in line, you listen to AWOL Airwaves, playing music by Duke Ellington, the Boswell Sisters, and Paul Whiteman and his orchestra, to name a few. This was an opening day attraction from 1955, and back then it was a serious trip through the exotic locations. It was more documentary style, and the skippers noticed that people were getting bored, so they started throwing in a few jokes here and there. Although there is a script, the skippers generally ad-lib throughout the ride. Actually, it was this ride that inspired Walt to say that his parks would never be complete. Once, Walt overheard a boy asking his mother if they could please ride the Jungle Cruise, and she replied, No, we did that last time we were here. So that's when Walt decided that all the attractions at Disneyland should always keep improving to keep guests coming back again and again. Across from the Jungle Cruise is the Adventureland Bazaar and South Seas Traders. Here you'll find all your travel needs for navigating the jungle. And they also have a cute elephant that will stamp pennies for you. Next we get to visit my favorite college professor and archaeologist, Dr. Indiana Jones. 
He's discovered a temple in India that offers one of three gifts to those who visit the site. Earthly riches, eternal youth, or visions of the future. As we walk through the Temple of the Forbidden Eye, we see eerie passageways with booby-trapped sections, beautiful wall murals, and Indy's office. We then board our transport truck to tour the rest of the temple. And even though Sala warns us not to look into the eyes of Mara, we do, and our harrowing ride begins. The truck is an enhanced motion vehicle and is a motion simulator in and of itself. It simulates speed, rough roads, and steep descents. It can be quite jerky, so if you get motion sick or have a bad back, be sure to ask for the seat in the middle of the middle. The queue is half a mile long, <laughs> and it leads you into a 50,000 square foot show building. In order to accommodate for this building, they had to reroute both the monorail and the jungle cruise. The attraction opened in 1995 and cost over $100 million. Imagineers actually hired linguists to create a new language which can be seen throughout the attraction. It's called Marabic, and when it first opened, Disney handed out cards so you could decipher the hieroglyphs. I think I still have one somewhere. Walking out of Indiana Jones, you'll start to notice the mouth-watering smell of meat grilling over an open flame, if you hadn't already noticed it before. That would be Bengal Barbecue, and it is one of my favorite snack locations in Disneyland. They offer chicken, beef, or pork belly skewers, along with a bacon-wrapped asparagus and skewered fresh vegetables. There's the tiger tail breadstick, baked with garlic herbs and sharp cheddar cheese, and a hummus trio. And anything I've had here is quite delicious. They offer mobile pickup, where you can place your order on the Disneyland app and they'll let you know when it's ready for pickup. And it's nice not to have to wait in yet another queue. Bengal Barbecue has been around since 1990, so it's been there a long time. And fortunately, a few years ago, they added some really nice indoor seating. And if you're more interested in fresh fruit or a pickle spear, Tropical Imports has all your needs on ice. And while you're there, don't forget to stop by Shrunken Ned, the Jungle Witch Doctor, to get some friendly advice. Looming off in the distance of Adventureland is Tarzan's Treehouse. As you climb the tree and cross a rope bridge, you will tour through rooms constructed out of salvaged parts from his shipwreck. Throughout the treehouse are scenes telling Tarzan's story, and Jane's sketchbook at each location tells the details. This is a walkthrough attraction with many stairs, but if you can do it, it's worth it for the views alone. Off in the distance, you'll see the Rivers of America, Mark Twain, and the Spires of Galaxy's Edge. This attraction was originally themed to the Swiss Family Robinson and opened in 1962. In the laboratory at the base of the tree, you can still hear the Swiss Capolka theme from the Robinson family playing on the old gramophone. In 1999, it was re-themed to tell Tarzan's story when the Disney animated film was released in theaters and they actually made the tree 10 feet taller, making it 70 feet high, and added more than 6,000 vinyl leaves. The root system of this tree extends more than four stories underground. I'm not real big on heights, but for some reason I am able to climb this treehouse. I do get the willies a little bit, but it's not too bad. If you're unable to climb, there is an interactive attraction area at the ground level. Just ask a cast member at the Pirates of the Caribbean entrance for help. I hope this has given you a good overview of everything Adventureland has to offer. It's one of my favorite lands at Disneyland, and when I enter the park, I always turn towards this area first. Comment below and let us know if you've been there and what your thoughts are. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to know more about my favorite subject, Disney, consider subscribing. We will continue to explore what makes Disney so magical. Until next time, have a wonderful week, and remember, it's all just designed for fun.